What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. In today's video, we're going through the 60 stamina difficulty of Wano Law. So this is a brand new Clash or Raid Boss style event. You guys can go ahead and pick up this brand new Wano style law. He looks really, really cool. I, I'm in love with this character's artwork and I really would love a Sugo Fest exclusive version of Trafalgar Law in this Wano style sometime in the future. But I digress. Let's actually talk about the unit itself first and then we'll get into four different teams I have for you guys today to take on the 60 stamina version of Wano Law. His captain ability will go ahead and boost the attack of Dex and Psy characters by three times when you have a matching slot, 2.25 times otherwise. So if you are running a team, like perhaps you could run him with a friend Stampede Luffy, that could be some sort of way to use it because Stampede Luffy gives you a pretty good amount of matching orbs. Um, but other than that, there aren't too many situations where you're going to be using this guy. His captain ability, or your special ability, mind you, will actually go ahead and deal 200,000 fixed damage to one enemy that ignores all defensive effects. So that's not too bad. He also reduces all enemies' resilience and blue shield defense and rainbow shield damage reduction by two turns. And if the captain is either Dex or Psy, he gives you a 0.8 times chain boost for one turn. Um, so overall, look, the unit is not too bad. The fixed damage is good. The utility that he provides with the removal of resilience, defense up, and damage reduction is good. However, only two turns is, in most cases, not enough. In a lot of cases, you know, you need, you're going to need three, four, maybe five turns. If this guy was, like, removing that by five turns and still maintain the 0.8 chain boost, this unit would be god tier and would be a 100% must farm. I do think you should probably farm him anyway because he's going to boost it. He's going to be boosted in future events, of course. So it, it's worth picking him up. Um, but yeah, he, he's special is okay. But he does have some crewmate abilities, which will go ahead and boost Dex and side characters' base attack by 50. And also, if he has a Dex slot and you land a perfect, he keeps it for the following turn which obviously works really well with his captain ability, trying to maintain matching slots. He does have a quick damage reduction potential ability by 5%, and a recovery bind potential ability by 5 turns, and a support ability supporting slashes, giving 5% HP and attack to the supported unit. So yeah, this unit could have been a lot better, and I feel like they should have really gone like balls to the wall, absolutely god tier, amazing, insane for this character. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. But either way, I do think it's worth farming anyway. Remember, you can farm and drop the rice bale items that are used for the act one Wano campaign event, so you need to try and drop as many of those as possible. Uh, and also, there are Chopper Man missions available that give you a really good amount of gems and stuff for just farming the event. I think you got to farm this event 30 times total, and you get a bunch of different rainbow gems. So make sure you go ahead and do that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start talking about the Wano Law 60 Stamina Raid. All right, so getting into this clash or raid boss or whatever you want to call it, um, on stage three is the first stage where you really have to take into consideration what's going on. So on stage three, there is a preemptive attack where they can't be delayed for 98 turns, which doesn't matter. But each of the enemies on stage three also have a resilience buff. So in order to get through this, Ideally, you want to bring someone on your crew that can deal end of turn damage, someone to remove the resilience, or someone to go ahead and poison the enemy. Those are like the three main ways that you get around resilience. And obviously, if you have Legend Kaido, it makes things a lot easier. Um, but there are definitely other characters that you could bring. You could go ahead and bring someone like Smoothie and Oven on your crew, use their switch ability to deal end of turn damage to bypass the uh, resilience on stage three. That's a really easy way around it. So if you are able to put them on your team, I would probably suggest that. But Another way that you could go ahead about it is just use a friend, Captain Kaido, if you uh, if you don't have him yourself. Um, I have uh, different teams in this video, and you guys will be able to see, like, even just with a friend Kaido, you're going to be able to demolish this raid boss. And it is honestly quite simple, as long as you are bringing a friend, Captain Kaido. In this team example here, I'm using Douglas Bullet. This is just another example of a team that you could use here. This one's a little bit more trickier to build, I feel, but, you know, if you have the characters available, you can use it if you do choose to do so. Following stage three, getting through those characters with the resilience, the next stage that you have to worry about is stage four. Stage four is just a bunch of mini bosses. You've got John Bart, Beppo, and Sachi and Penguin. All of them have either between 1.8 to 2.2 million HP. So they are relatively tanky. Their preemptive attack has delay immunity for 98 turns. Also, you're target locked to John Bart for 98 turns. There's one turn of defense up as well, but that only will apply to John Bart himself, and your crew will be paralyzed for four turns. So removing the defense up and paralysis is going to help you out a lot here. After turn one, the enemy will actually buff the enemy attack. So I think it's Beppo that applies the attack boost. 
and then below 20%, I'm not really too sure who below 20% does it. Uh, I know John Bart doesn't do anything below 20%, but uh, if you do get, I think it's either Beppo or Sachi and Penguin below that threshold, they will bind you for four turns. And when Beppo's HP falls to zero, uh, they're going to go ahead and give you five turns of cooldown to your captains, which is really, really nice. It enables your captain specials to be pretty much ready to go when you reach stage five. So when you do reach stage five, it is going to be against Trafalgar Law and some mob characters. The preemptive will give himself 98 turns of delay immunity. He'll also remove all of your beneficial effects and remove all of your accumulated damage. So this means that any specials such as V2 Doflamingo, V2 Katakuri, those types of specials that store damage are not going to be effective here so do not bring any of those types of specials um you can see law has 15 million hp so he is relatively tanky but of course he does change into a quick type which means that legend kaido is again another really ideal captain to use here after the first turn of attacks he will apply 20 turns of attack down to your team i believe he only will inflict it i think i think the attack down is only 50 percent so it's not that bad but it will obviously not be ideal um, and below 20%, Law will go ahead and despair your ship for 10 turns and deal lots of damage to your team. Uh, also removes all beneficial effects below 20%. The next team example here is with Sanji and Judge, a relatively straightforward team example. If you do have Sanji and Judge, most likely you're going to have Yongji and the Ichiji 5+. Plus. And if you do, those are really nice units to bring here. Um, if you don't have the Ichiji, I mean, you'd have to bring someone else, but Ichiji is here to apply the end of turn damage on stage 3 to get around those resilience buffs. As I said, you could go ahead and apply someone like um, Smoothie and Oven, who's really, really good to uh, give you the end of turn damage. That would mean, though, that you're not really allowed to switch into Judge, because Judge requires one of every color on your team, and of course, if you do bring Smoothie and Oven, then you won't have a strength unit on your crew, unfortunately. Um, the other units on this team, you've got the Jack, which is really nice for the stage 4 fight allowing you to get rid of the blue shield defense and it also does a, a pretty decent chunk of damage to John Bart. You've got Yonji for the color affinity on the final boss stage and also Katakuri is really useful here the Colosseum version of Katakuri as the final boss stage has four enemies which means that his delay will actually activate um, and it will go through delay immunity so you can delay all the enemies for two turns which gives you uh, you know a pretty good amount of time just to kill law and then you can take your time with the mobs but Colosseum Katakuri is also really nice because they'll, he'll go ahead and uh, make all type orbs beneficial to your powerhouse units so that really helps out a lot when you do reach that final stage and of course Sanji and Judge are uh, just amazing captains being a uh, I think it's what is it 4.25 captain to powerhouse and uh, also you can use their special ability on stage 4 and 5 stage 4 specifically to get rid of the paralysis as well as an attack and an orb boost which makes stage 4 a, a cakewalk and then of course with that massive boost on stage 5 you're not going to have too many issues with Sanji and Judge. So there are going to be two more teams in this video that you guys can go ahead and take a look at. The next team involves a, a, a Captain Jack and a friend Captain Kaido. So you can actually get some more EXP whilst farming this raid lore if you want to go ahead and do that. The team is pretty easy to build. There is only one other Sugo Fest exclusive character on that specific team. But uh, other than that, it's, just, it's a pretty straightforward team to build. And then the final team, of course, is going to be the big boy Kaido himself. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this video today. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.